problem with chiropractic exams. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the KC Chiropults podcast. I'm Dr. Michael Perush from Cats Consultants, and I'm joined with my good friend and cohort, Dr. Troy Fox. Troy, we were talking about this off camera right before we mm-hmm. jumped on here. And I think you bring up a really valid point that we're seeing this big trend that chiropractors aren't doing a deep enough dive on their exams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think some of this started, you know, and it's kind of been a trend over the last decade or so. I think in a lot of cases where the x-ray requirements or the amount of x-rays that were being taken in chiropractic, you know, we go back to the 80s and 90s, everybody got an x-ray. Right. And then there was kind of some blowback as newer students got out of school. Well, that's not necessary that maybe you took an x-ray for that. Although, you know, as, as you look at some of the red flag rules, um, I, you know, spinous tenderness qualifies yeah. for it's not hard to find but, a reason, but we're seeing folks that are not taking as many x-rays <clears throat> or the reimbursement just wasn't there. And right. so they're sending them on to the hospital or whatever to have the x-rays taken because there's just no benefit to them financially. And they didn't want to maintain an x-ray machine and the license and all that. But beyond that, I think what's happened is there's been a slow slide in some cases of folks that have relaxed their exams as well. Yeah. And I think that's Correct. I think that's an alarming trend. And and you and I could probably tell several stories about times when we took x-rays of patients. One of them was my own staff that yeah. ended up ended up having a, a cancer that had metastasized and yeah. found it when we took x-ray. So, but it was because there was an exam there to begin with. So I would right. say one, let's do exams. Two, the other thing I think of is let's make sure we're doing exams on our staff. If yeah. you're gonna if you bring new staff in and, hey, they're going to get under chiropractic care, let's make sure that we set the example by doing a complete exam on them. It's not just a cursory exam because, oh, they're already a staff member and they're here in the office. Just, you know, jump on the table kind of thing. Right. No, it's 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 so true. And I think, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the one of the reasons why I think we've seen this slide, which mm-hmm. your term, which I think is valid, is because we don't get reimbursed sometimes for exams. We don't get reimbursed sometimes for x-rays. You know, you take Medicare, you know, we only get reimbursed for the adjustment. Uh, You take progress exams. A lot of insurance insurance companies aren't reimbursing for progress exams. So we just take that as well. If I'm not going to get paid for it, I'm not going to do it. But what we have to remember is there's a standard of care that you have to live up to. And that standard of care Mm -hmm. is the delicate balance between providing good care as a doctor to a patient to do no harm and balanced against really what could be deemed as malpractice. So when you agree to accept that patient into care, you're agreeing to accept that patient's problems and mm-hmm. to help them with their mm-hmm. problems. Now, do we help them with all of them? You found cancer on a patient. I've had that happen as well. Do we help cancer? No. But do we diagnose to the point? Do we evaluate to the point where we can help patients uncover those things? Yes, and we should be. And if you're one of those doctors out there that you've been in practice for 10 or 20 years, or as long as you and I have, mm-hmm. um, and you you tell me that you've never seen anything like that. Um, I'm going to say we need to dig a little bit deeper with our exams. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to get on my high horse here for just a second. Do it. I also see doctors doing such a limited exam and their diagnosis shows it. And so then they've got a very limited diagnosis. You get 12 positions on that CMS form when you're doing your mm-hmm. billing. I hardly ever remember not using all of them, especially a, mm-hmm. a patient who came in with at least two symptoms and not getting a low back, for example. Mm-hmm. Dig deep, you know, flush those diagnoses out. You know, those that also helps you keep the patient in care longer when they need it. You know, if you have a limited diagnosis, but the patient's got a lot going on, you're only going to get a handful of visits for that patient. Insurance company is going to cut you off probably. And then the patient may not stay in care because of that. And now you've done the patient a disservice because they didn't get the outcomes that they wanted. Right. And I think as you look at it, doing a complete exam means doing a complete exam not only in the area where the patient's main complaint is, but I think we have to listen to patient history 
We have to listen to what's going on with them right now that may seem inconsequential. Right. So sometimes somebody will come in and they'll talk about how they're having neck and neck and upper thoracic pain. But I also see that when I'm looking through some of your documentation that you filled out before you came into my office, that you've had some pretty substantial digestive problems. You know, there may be something that is it is it possible that I may need to <clears throat> do some palpation of the abdomen? I mm -hmm. may. Or it may be a situation where I find out that you've already had all kinds of testing done. And I may not need to do my own examination, but there may be a piece of nutrition, some, something as simple as probiotics I may need to use with you. So it's not always that I have to get down and dirty with every single square inch of that person's body to look through it. But I do need to make sure that one, I'm doing a, I'm doing a complete exam, at least on the areas of interest that are primary. And if I see areas that are important, but maybe not urgent to the patient, I'm already there. Why would right. I not go ahead and document that I took a look at that problem? It looks like this is more of a nutritional problem. We're going to recommend some probiotics or whatever, maybe something simple like that. And sometimes we run into situations where it isn't something that we deal with, <clears throat> but it's a really nice time to collaborate with other professionals in the area at that point and make that qualified referral. And that professional that you're working with is going to appreciate that number one. And they're going to have a deeper respect for what you do because Amen. we are, we are doctors. That's we're, right. we're not technicians. And I think sometimes we, we've almost shoved ourselves in the corner. Like you said, because of non-reimbursement, it's like, well, this isn't important if I'm not getting paid for it. And, and I think that that, that, is a problem from a stamp well from from many different standpoints legal uh ethical i mean we, we run into some issues with that oh yeah it's, there's a whole handful of things there exams are important and i think sharpening steel with steel by doing exams is also a really great way for you to catch that condition on a patient that you really want to catch i, I know i'm a little bit older non-traditional when it comes to taking part four some of you guys, I said that and it struck fear in your hearts. You almost had a little mini heart attack, right? When I said it, I took part four <laughs> within the last five years, because when I graduated from school initially, I missed the part four cutoff. And they're like, oh, if you're going to practice in, you know, the state of Kansas, which is where I'm at, then you don't need to worry about it. And I went, I'm done. I'm out of here. Guess what? <laughs> Yeah, 20, 20 plus years or 20, yeah, a little over 20 years later, when I had let my license lapse for a period of time, um, I decided to get my license back in the state of Kansas said, oh, no, no, Troy, you need to take part four. And we all know what that is. It's a big exercise and exam diagnosis. And, and then you can tack on a few adjustive positions and lines of drive at the very end. But you're looking at x-rays and you're doing a lot of exams and looking at labs, right? Yep. <clears throat> that's the kind of stuff that's so important. And, you know, I can tell you that most of you guys and gals that are out there right now do a fantastic job of diagnosis. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, if you've slacked a little bit, pick up the pace because- yep. I know that if you got through part four, you're a pretty good diagnostician. That's not an easy exam. We all know that. It, it struck fear in my heart, too. It was probably the worst experience of my life. And then when I got my results, it was one of the best experiences of my life. So <laughs> we know that we all have the capability, but I think we need to make sure that we're doing our due diligence with patients. I think we owe them that. Well, and I think that's a great term to use. Maybe we should use due diligence instead of an exam. You know, you don't you don't make a big investment. You don't buy a house, for example, without doing some due diligence. You go in, you mm -hmm. check all the faucets, you test everything. You have an inspector go in, you make sure the roof works right. There's no liens, crazy liens against the house, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You do your due, due diligence. We need to do our due diligence with our patients too. And I like what you said, sharpen steel with steel. Keep- mm -hmm. Keep your doctor senses sharp by doing exams, do deep exams. One of my favorite things in practice is the exam. I love doing exams. I always did. And by the way, I enjoyed part four. <laughs> Good for you. I'm the one, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it, it does, it, it keeps your doctor skills tight and we wouldn't have to go through 
all of that skill presentation in part four, for example, if it wasn't necessary. Mm -hmm. So do the exams. You, you know, if you're in cash practice out there, you, you're probably sitting there smiling really big because you're not having to worry about whether or not you're getting reimbursed. The patient's mm -hmm. paying you for it. But if you're having trouble with this, I'm, I'm just going to throw this out. Maybe this is a way to kind of wrap up. If you're having trouble with this, this is the kind of stuff that we help doctors with. How to get the headspace around your own thought process so that you do things right and you do them with ease. Practice doesn't have to be hard. It, honestly, practice should be fun. You should walk in every day, big smile on your face, and know that everything you're doing is right. And that's what we do. We help you stay in that right lane. Yeah, and I'm going to toot your horn a little bit on this because this is really something that we've been working on lately with our mastermind group. So we don't just assume yep. that you have every tool known to man when you walk in to see us. We hit different areas. And right now it happens to be that Dr. Perush has led uh, and is still leading a weekly mastermind okay. class where we get together as, as docs and we talk about proper diagnosis. We talk about proper exams. We talk about daily notes and what should be in, in them. In other words, the whole process from the first time you see the patient through that first adjustment or a series of adjustments, what should be in the notes at that point? And I think it's a it's a very important transition. So the, it's, it's not just, hey, how do you get new patients in the door? That's not what we do as consultants. We right. consult on every area of your practice. I don't care if it's the emotional portion of it, the motivational portion of your practice, whether it's nuts and bolts of what your staff do every day, or whether we're helping you make sure that you have proper documentation. And we've talked before on this show as well, that we're more than happy to look at your documentation and oh, yeah. see what, you know, see what it looks like and see if you've dotted all the I's crossed all the T's from an auditing standpoint. It's a very, um, it, it's a very easy way to do it without feeling like you're being attacked. Right. Uh, when you have another colleague that looks at it and goes, Hey, we need to probably clean this area and this area up. Otherwise it looks pretty good, you know, or we need to redo the whole thing. I mean, yeah. if you find that out the easy way and it doesn't cost you thousands and thousands of dollars in audit reimbursement, I think it's a fantastic thing. So if you're having troubles, tell them where to go, Dr. Perush. All you got to do is go to catsconsultants.com. It's cats with a K, K-A-T-S. Go to catsconsultants.com. We make it really simple. We have got all kinds of free downloads and things on the website. Check those out. But more importantly, go schedule a breakthrough call. In the top right corner of the website, you can schedule a call. Just click on the button. You'll go right to my calendar. People ask me this all the time. Why do you do that? Do you really do it for free? Yes, we really do it for free. Why? Because we care. We care about this profession. We care about chiropractors wanting to have successful practices. We want you to be a success. We've been successful in, in chiropractic and we just, we want to pass that on plain and simple. Absolutely. All right, everybody. We really appreciate you out there. So make sure you check us out at catsconsultants.com. And most of all, we appreciate you listening to our weekly podcast, KC Chiropults Podcast, brought to you by Cats Consultants. We'll see you guys next time. See ya.